A calorimeter is a device or a piece of equipment that we can use to measure the heat that is exchanged in a chemical reaction. In this video, I'm going to be talking about one type of calorimeter called a constant pressure calorimeter. These are also referred to as coffee cup calorimeters. This is a schematic or a drawing of a coffee cup calorimeter. Before I talk about the different components of the coffee cup calorimeter, I wanna talk very briefly about this phrase, constant pressure. Obviously, you understand when somebody says constant pressure, you understand that that means pressure is not changing. How do we go about accomplishing a constant pressure system for this particular type of calorimeter? Constant pressure, um, again, just simply means that there can be no increase or decrease in pressure. We cannot build up a collection of gases or create a vac vacuum. And this is possible only because our constant pressure calorimeters do not have a lid on them. So you see there's no lid on top of this device, or if a lid is put on it, it's a loose lid, it's not perfectly sealed. So gases can freely exchange in and out of this calorimeter. So there is no increase or decrease in pressure due to either no lid or a loose fitting lid on top of the calorimeter. And that's all that that means. So let's take a look at the different parts of the calorimeter. First of all, the reason it's called a coffee cup calorimeter is because it is literally made of coffee cups or some sort of insulated cup that you would use for a hot drink. Typically we use two of these coffee cups, one nested inside of the other. So I'm just gonna say here that we have two coffee cups. Maybe these are styrofoam cups. Also, obviously we need to have a thermometer in this system. Um, the whole point is that we want to be monitoring temperature change. So we need to have a thermometer that can allow us to monitor the temperature change. And then inside this coffee cup calorimeter in this area, this is where we have our chemical reaction taking place. This, the contents of the inside of the calorimeter uh, represent both the system and the surroundings for this particular process. So inside here, we have the system which will be some sort of chemical reaction. And we also have the surroundings in here as well. And typically in a coffee cup calorimeter, the surroundings are water. So this is a chemical reaction that's taking place in water inside this coffee cup. Now the, the premise or the, the main concept um, in coffee cup calorimetry is that all of the heat that is given off or absorbed by this chemical reaction is exchanged with the water inside of this coffee cup. So we can say, let's just say that this chemical reaction is an exothermic reaction, so it's giving off heat. So if the sign of heat for our chemical reaction is negative, so our Q system would be negative because it's exothermic giving off heat, all of the heat that is being given off or released by our chemical reaction is going to be absorbed by the water, which are the surroundings in this case. The insulation, the two coffee cups nested inside of each other are uh, providing sufficient insulation so we don't have any heat that is actually making its way completely outside of the coffee cup. Typically the reactions that we're doing in constant pressure calorimeters are ones that don't evolve tremendous amount of heat. So we don't have to worry about them being able to you know, exceed the, the insulating capabilities of our coffee cups. So all of the heat that is being released by the system is being absorbed by the surroundings. Or another way that we could phrase this is that all of the heat that is being given off by the reaction, RxN is our common abbreviation for reaction. All the heat that's being given off by the reaction is being absorbed by the water inside the calorimeter. Um, and this would be the case for an exothermic reaction that had a negative Q. If we had an endothermic reaction, which would have a positive Q, so that all the heat that is being absorbed by the reaction, all of that heat would be, be coming from the water inside the calorimeter. So we can see that the amount of heat, whether we're talking about the reaction or the water, the value of the heat is gonna be the same, uh, and the only difference will be the sign. 
So let's take this and let's turn this into equations that are going to be very useful for us. So let's talk in the context of the water, which uh, are the surroundings for this particular calorimeter. For the water, we can say that the heat that is exchanged by the water, whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't really matter, all of the heat that is being exchanged by the water can be determined by taking the specific heat of the water, little s, multiplying it by the mass of the water that we have put into our calorimeter. So we would weigh out how much water is inside this calorimeter and then multiply that by the temperature change that we observe for the water using the thermometer that's inside the calorimeter. Now, since we have already said, we have already defined the heat of the reaction is equal in magnitude, but opposite in sign for the heat of the surroundings or the water, which we defined right here, we can take these two equations and basically put them together. So instead of writing QH2O, we're gonna use SMAT H2O in its place, which will allow us to combine these reactions or these equations. So we can say that the heat of a chemical reaction that's being conducted in a constant pressure, coffee cup calorimeter, is due to the negative specific heat of the water, the mass of the water, and the change in temperature that we observe with our thermometer that's stuck inside of the water. Now in a previous video, we have defined that when we are at constant pressure, which we are in this particular case, we like to call Q delta H. So when we're at constant pressure, we like to use the symbol delta H in place of Q. They both refer to heat. They both mean the same thing. But with that in mind, we could replace this Q with a delta H because we are under constant pressure. And we get a new equation, delta H of the chemical reaction that's taking place inside of our calorimeter is negative specific heat of water times the mass of the water inside the calorimeter times the temperature change of the water, water. And this is a really important reaction for us when we're doing uh, constant pressure calorimetry. If we happen to know the actual heat capacity, C, we can write a different equation, delta H is negative C H2O delta T H2O. But typically with constant pressure calorimeters, we don't know the heat capacity, we just simply know the mass. Now one last thing that I'm gonna put on this video, for water, because this is commonly used in constant pressure calorimetry, the value of the specific heat is 4.184 joules per gram degrees C. This is a constant that you can look up, but it's a number that's used so frequently in these calculations that it's handy to have it close by. In the next video, I'm going to go through two problems where we can actually take a look at data that's collected in constant pressure calorimetry and see how that data can be analyzed and used.